What the heck's going on, everybody? Coming in hot with the comment of the week. This one comes from at AJ Heath 5123, and it is in relation to the podcast we did with in-house experts, Mr. Adam Maxwell and Mr. Ryan Muckenhern, all about the 1911, the most iconic pistol design ever, question mark. Guys, this was a fun one. It was information-packed, and now I'm going to read this comment that is tied to it. I love the beauty of living in the, in the United States, where we're not restricted to only one. That way we can try out all the different pistols and figure out for ourselves which one we think is the best design. Personally, the CZ-75B is one of the most iconic designs ever most people don't acknowledge. AJ, that is one thing of many that I love about the United States as well. Let's keep it that way. Thank you for the comment. Uh, for your comment, you're going to get one of these super sweet Vortex Nation podcast hoodies. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm wearing it right now. AJ, we're going to reach out reach out to you via the YouTube comments and uh, make sure that uh, yeah, you can shoot in style with your new sweatshirt. Without further ado, let's start the show. I've got a 1022 on my list. Mm. Squirrels, rabbits, plinking, varmints in the backyard. It's got a suppressor on it. I would have to say 6.5 PRC um, is one of those rounds that I'm able to one pack punch at a distance that I'm comfortable shooting an animal at. I'm going to start with the one that got away, the 1903 Manlicker Shonar carbine, chambered in 6.5 by 54 Manlicker. What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic here. Mr. Ryan Muckenhern to my right. And across from us, we have Mr. Ruben Allickson and Mr. Nick Blau. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Boy, a lot of precasting today. Mm. Covered ground. (laughs) Covered a lot of ground. Wide Uh, earth. (laughs) My eyes have been opened. Uh, and hopefully uh, Ryan wasn't hitting the record button for any of it. All of that is where it needs to be. <laughs> it's in the file. It's in <laughs> the file. Uh, Nick, you were just saying, yeah. and this was going to be part of my open, we do a lot of uh, S-H-T-F Correct. type stuff. Not a lot, but some. Mm-hmm. People generally like that. And, and they like, we get a lot of positive feedback on kind of like that. And Shoot the hunt trap fish? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> That's kind of what you got to do if that happens. That kind of, it's, yeah. Uh, that goes hand in hand. Uh, patented. I'm making the shirt. Sorry to patent your idea. Hey, man. I, did. I know the rules. <laughs> <It> just, <laughs> Whoever says patented yeah. first. Uh, dibs. <laughs> We've been here before. Uh, <laughs> this was a listener request from a, from a Mr. Newman. And he's like, hey, I want to know. Newman? Like your, uh, your five, kind of your top five non sh and all the other things like this is pick your five guns yeah times are good ammunition is available you're not having to you know scour somebody's basement seeing if you can find something to fit in you know the firearm that you have perhaps something like that i mean this is let the good times roll easy breezy you might pick a gun just because uh of its obscurity and because you like it this is sweet freedom, gentlemen. There are no rules. There are no constraints. And, uh, but like, but you only get five, which actually, it was really easy for me. Like I picked five. And you know how hard it is for me to make a decision. Yes. Five made, five helped. If you said three, that would have been troublesome. Oh, so the, okay. All right. Like, what do you mean? What was your question? <sighs> so I, the lower the number, the more challenging it is for you. The higher the number, you're happier because there's many options. You don't have to... You don't have to choose. Understood. I, I got you now. I'm tracking. It's a decision thing. Less compromise. Yeah. Less compromise. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. You're like, well, do I go with this? Then I don't have... The, you know, this is like... Eh, mm-hmm. can really mm-hmm. cover mm-hmm. at least what I can, would consider my basis. I understand. Uh, I think I might have an outlier in there that you wouldn't have suspected, though. I'm listening. Do you have yours? Do you have yours up here, Ryan? Yeah. All right. Uh, guys, thoughts. I, I want a, a point of clarity. Yeah. Well, you said there's no rules, so I guess that kind of clarifies things. Like these are for me, these are going to be the ones that got away. Well, we're going to operate within the constructs of society. I don't understand. 
society as we wish it was. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I, so I, I guess I, I, I guess it. my five are going to be the guns that I I either had and let go. Yeah. Wanted have not been able to acquiesce. Yeah. Um, or will it would be like an extraordinary financial burden too. Yeah. Understood. Mine are uh, going to be based on what I like to do. Mm-hmm. The five guns I need to do what I like to do. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I am excited to see how big water fishing ties into Ruben's firearm selection. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be great. I'm with, I'm with Rube on this one. Mine are based in practicality mm. and how I like to sp- spend my time. Mm-hmm. 100%. I'm on the same page as that. I just okay. wanted to have the the right. I do have some caveats. So. The right firearms to be able to do the things I like to do: hunt, protect myself, protect my house. I think that those five guns are an easy pick for me. I like it. I don't know if I should go first or last because I'm kind of vanilla. I feel like mine might be the least interesting. Noah, Noah, set the stage. Okay, do it. Get my notes out. I also, I'm not like super specific here. They're more like uh, categorically. It's not like th- this brand. This brand of you know, it's uh, and some of these I have, and some of them, yeah, pretty much all of these I have actually. That's why I have them because I like them, and I need them to do what I need to do. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. A lightweight 300 wisdom. <laughs> I have it. Wow. I love it. I, I know. Shot. Shocking. First choice. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jeez. Ryan, Mark, I have this because I, I because uh, that's a gun I have a lot of confidence in. Yes. Recently, yes. I think we'll do some. We'll elaborate on it, but uh, we modified my Tika. We did. Uh, put a new stock on it. Put a new barrel on it. Uh, off the go, had a little bit of trouble actually getting it to shoot after we made it quotation mark better, but now it's great. And uh. Yeah, then I took it, Ryan and I, uh, as per usual, got it going last minute, got a load. She's a nail biter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, once, once we had it shooting at the 100 yard range the, and had it chronoed, that was all I needed to know. I'll say this, um, and this is, we, I don't know why we do this to ourselves, but we do every year. It's always uh, it's something about the cobbler's kids never have good shoes on their feet or some business like that. Yeah. Um, I think you had less than 36 hours until you departed. No. We proofed that dope out on a Tuesday, and, you and were, I left Friday night. Oh, okay. I, you, that's right. We had plenty you, of time. You were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a range that uh, Mark and I go to locally here, and they have a, a sanctioned silhouette range on there. So everything's in meters and at the 500 meter line is a very particular target that Mark has a storied history with. It is a chicken. And I would say that it Somewhat is... Somewhat arbitrary. It is, but now it's kind of a thing. It's its own character. Yeah. Um, it is not the size of a regular chicken. It's a it's about the size of like a voluptuous banty rooster. Like, so I'd say the the body of the chicken, yeah. if you... Is about the size of this cube if, that we got on the table. Yeah, if you had a thick banny, that's what you'd end up with. Um, and that chicken is on a post. Ruben knows the chicken. Yeah, 500 meters. Could have been chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> the fr- that'll get you. Anytime you throw that in, that could, that'll get you. We've talked about it on the podcast before. Just Google if you it. Prob- if you Google could have been chicken, you're going to see it's just like a wild video, man. It's like a newscaster interviewing a guy, and he's just kind of a wild dude. I'm not like, I'm not throwing shade at him. Like, the (laughs) video brings me great joy. Um, And he's just... She's in there cooking. He he starts, like, directing the new camera guy. Like, it's great. Mark, the first time I ever saw him... As a vine. Shoot that (laughs) chicken. Vine. (laughs) Shoot that chicken. Was offhand at 500 meters with a 308 Kimber Mountain Ascent. Um, in which he just nonchalantly says, well, I think I can take that. <laughs> and it was, it was, it had the old Razor LH one and a half to eight on it. No. Yes. You're making things up. That again. was my gun. And he 
just simply shouldered the gun and just simply shot the chicken off the post at 500 meters. That's 547 yards. And it just, whap, and then, bing, goes off. And then um, he's done not necessarily that shot, but we've proofed on the chicken many times. Yeah. Many rifles, many times over many years. And now we have agreed that... It, the, the final seal of approval is if you can take uh, a relatively cold bore shot. There's yeah. of, there's a switchy wind at that range. Um, Mark missed the chicken by perhaps two inches on the first shot. Well, and we called a a left, yeah, a, a left to right wind call. Yep. So I held on the left edge of the chicken. Just not enough left edge. No, it went left edge. Oh, it did, did, did. It and did. Then, and then we held straight up yeah. and we hit straight up. Yeah, yeah. And then Mark peeled the chicken off the post. The rifle has been chicken-proofed. Chicken-proofed. Yeah. So um, I ordered a stamp, and we'll <laughs> dink that into the side of his barrel. It's just a chicken. That's the confidence booster. Right? That's yeah. like, okay, we went out, you know, two, three, four, and then you're like, okay, here chicken. we go. Let's chicken-proof it. Yep. And uh, And then we did. And then well, I don't care. Uh, spoiler alert! I'm gonna sp- we're gonna do a podcast on this. Yeah. But then I went out the next week, which was I guess that would have been the last week of August. Went on a, a high mountain alpine bear hunt with a buddy of mine. Five day hunt. Morning of day five, we were gonna leave at 10 a.m. We spotted a bear at probably like 6:30 in the morning, and uh, got to a spot. <clears throat> we decided to make a stock on him. And got to a spot where you were either going to start going up the hill and work your way across and hope that he was still feeding in that opening, which he was probably going back to bed pretty soon. Or you were going to take the shot. And because Ryan and I had put in this work on the front end, I'd been actually shooting the rifle a lot. lot, It just took us a little bit to get it dialed how we wanted it. And probably our standard might be a little bit different than, you know. Uh, Got to a spot, ranged him. Should I say the range? That's up to you. I'm okay with it because I had the confidence to make the shot. I understand. 780 yards. But got to a spot, excellent shooting position, nice rock to shoot off of, got my bipod out, waited for myself to calm down because it was a little bit of a hike to get up there. You know, I'm like, okay, hey, let's take a minute here. Got the bipod out, got the gun set up, grabbed my pack, shoved it under my elbow, had good rear support, and got on. I'm like, Reticle's not moving. Reticle's not moving yeah. at all. The bear's stationary. It's in the open. It's broadside. And let her go. And Down the hill. Down the hill. Down the rock. Right, shooty yeah. went. That's so awesome. It was cool. Like, it was really cool to be like, 15 years ago, I never would have even, it would not have crossed my mind to take that shot. And to, to be able to get in that situation and make. Uh, yeah, it's like your last day, right? I mean. Yeah, and I wasn't, I wasn't worried about I w- when I was pressing the trigger. I wasn't like, I hope I hit him. Like I was just like concentrating on making that shot, and it and it worked out, and we got him. And beautiful, beautiful big boar, and one of the most breathtaking, picturesque, most rugged. We put in a ton of work. Like it was like you couldn't have had it turn out better. There. That's why you want that rifle. And that's why I want that right. I get it. And with the scope, with an LHT two and a half to ten on it, it weighs seven and a half pounds. And I like so I like that because I'm a weight pansy and I don't like making a lot of weight. Hey, it's a lovely gun. <laughs> but you shot it, Ryan, and it's a shootable seven and a half. It pounds. is. It is, and it's very shootable. It is. It does not feel like a seven and a half pound wisdom moving a two hundred gram projectile at twenty twenty seven eighty five. Yeah, it's it's very manageable. We had an SD of less than 10 feet per second. It worked like, out. High level confidence. So I'm Sweet. going with that. That's my do all killing stick. Anything in North America, that's what I'm taking. Including bears. Stepping it down a notch, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't even have my notes on the right page now. I don't even. Just looking at the blank page. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to look smart. There they are. I don't even need this list. Just a good bolt action 6.5 Creedmoor. And that's going to be my. I want to recreationally shoot a little, some long range. Uh, I want a deer hunt, maybe a coos deer hunt, antelope. Uh, I don't feel like subjecting myself to 300, you know, type mm-hmm. recoil. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
yeah, just medium sized, big game. Heck, you could do some predator hunting if you wanted to, whatever. But I think to me, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You get yourself a 300 and a 6.5 Creed, and boy, you can pretty much knock down anything you want to knock down. So those are my two. I'm going to pick two kind of big game rifles. Outside of that, Ryan, this is, this is what might surprise you, because I have to pick. And I'm not necessarily picking the most practical thing here, in a way. I'm going with a, uh, like a, a Benelli M2 with wood, 12-gauge. Really? Yeah. I did not see that coming. I, I'm, oh man, and I toiled with this one. I'm generally a synthetic guy, right? Yeah. I like the durability. I like the practicality. I like that it's impervious to the elements. Uh, but I wanted a gun that I was like, I felt like I really enjoyed from an aesthetic standpoint. I could take it grouse hunting, but I could also have it in, in the duck pit, goose blind, and it's going to do whatever I need it to do. Is this 12 gauge? 12 gauge, you yeah, 100%. Bring, you can't bring a 12 gauge grouse hunting. If it has a wood, that's why it has a wood stock. Okay. I think, you know, I actually, I think I did make that provision public a little while ago. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not going to scrub every podcast that we've done, but I think that yeah. might be in there. And that's not the, but I was just like, uh, so yeah, I'm going with the 12 gauge. You want to shoot turkeys? Great. You want to shoot waterfowl? Yep. Great. You want to shoot grouse? Great. I've shot bob whites with 12, with 12 gauge, pheasants, all the things. Um, so that, that's what I'm doing there. And, uh, Ruger 1022. Everybody needs a Ruger 1022. Yep. And uh, yeah, squirrels, plankin, all the things. I'd probably customize it a little bit. Yep. I would actually, because there's not a scope provision here, so I would set it up. I would customize the heck out of it, still leave it an autoloader. Yep. Set it up for long range, but not so much that it couldn't be like a very uh, suitable squirrel type gun if you wanted to put like just your, your typical rimfire scope on it. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and then outside of that, everybody needs an AR, Ryan. Mm-hmm. I think it should be required. Uh, I think you should get one when you're born. Yeah. Because one gets assigned to you. Yeah. I think it's like a social security number. A lightsaber. Yeah. Is that how that works? I haven't researched it a lot, but it sounds right. Okay. So I'm going with just kind of like a... Not a super short light, not going with a heavy. I'm going with just like a moderately sized, high quality uh, factory gun. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting it together. Uh, I'm trusting the factory to do all the things to to optimize the one that I select. And uh, it's gonna be my uh, it's gonna be my predator rifle. It's gonna be uh, my plinkin rifle to a degree. I do mostly hunting. So I don't, I don't do a ton of recreational shooting, but uh, do some long range stuff with it, and uh, potentially some big game if I feel like it, because I'm doing it in a six arc Ryan. Mm. Wow! So I can do some some long range fun stuff. I imagine you could kick a door with that thing, don't you think, Rube? Nick? Potentially. Potentially. Nick approved. You can kick a lot of doors with a lot of things in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> six arc and- might be one of them. That's my uh, that's my five. I that's lo- my top five. I was loading six arc yesterday. Mark. My only downside, if there is a downside, would be just magazine capacity. That's it. It 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 is a you're making a uh, a consolation there, but not that much. Yeah. So like yeah, I knew that was a. I'm lo- I'm losing a little bit of volume. So I like I like how you did your list because I did my really similar but a little different. Okay. Overall, hey, I want some. Let's get the feeling, yeah, the panel. thoughts, feelings. What, what, is What's, panel what, what does the panel think? Yeah, I think Mark's practical. He doesn't do things in excess. He has an appropriate amount of coffee cups. He has an appropriate <laughs> list of. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? I think Mark made his list based on. Uh, well, I've known you for over ten years. Yeah, seems like the right list. Yeah, that falls in with what I know Mark to do. Thank you. Yeah. Practical man. Simple man. Simple man. Yeah. I'm on board with that. Okay. Crack yeah, like cups. So Ruben, you had a similar similar list, yeah. Process. Yeah, I got I got like the the five guns that I want to own. It's also kind of my advice to people. Okay. If you're gonna only own five guns. Um so I started out with an AR. AR fifteen. Yeah. Um 
I'm going chambered two, two, three wild. I'm going to go 18 inch barrel. Um, and I'll probably do a collapsible stock beyond that. My thoughts on that are, uh, I can predator hunt. I can shoot prairie dogs. I can defend my home. I can compete with it. That's a big part of my life is yep. competing. So I'm going to compete with that gun. And then, you know, as far as like the optics go, I, I, I can put whatever I want on it. Right. You told me to pick five guns, not five optics. So that, I've, oh, yeah. I've in this, I, that's I, the, uh, that's the hack to this. In one. this <laughs> ideal world, I've got a few different optics setups for that. When you have access to those things here. Yep. Yep. So that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing the same thing as you did. I'm, I'm not building my own. I'm buying one from a, a reputable manufacturer that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is known for quality, reliability and accuracy. Yep. hundred um, percent. Not putting a lot of go fast parts on it. It's going to be built, built to go bang every time you pull the trigger. I like that. Um, so that, that was my first one. My second one is a bolt action hunting rifle. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my little caveat there is I'm probably, if I'm picking one, one bolt action hunting rifle, I'm probably picking something that has a little modularity. So I'm probably going with an action where I can swap the bolt face and swap the barrel to change calibers. Now, if you told me I have to pick... You were just like, you you are a three-gunner. Like, you're just always gaming the system. If you told me... Well, now I've got seven guns. So I will say... (laughs) The serial number's on. Yeah, you said guns. Um, if I'm, if I'm not gaming the system, I'm, I'm, it's a six, five PRC um, really? based on, yeah, I've All got right. my first six, five PRC I got in 2018. I, that thing's called the killing stick. It just, it does the job. It's um, a bang flopper, huh? I've shot whitetails <laughs> in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, it's a bang flopper. I've shot whitetails <laughs> in Wisconsin. Uh, I've shot elk in Wyoming. Um, I've shot coyotes, um, it's reached good out on some, that. you know, you know, it's a, it's just a good all around for what I do. I've never bear hunted. Um, I've never moose hunted. I've never shot anything bigger than an elk. Um, but well, elk it's killed big. elk. It's killed Neil guy. It's killed deer. Uh, those Neil guy are big, the big stout critter. animals. Super, super dense. Yeah. Um, so based on what I've done with it, where'd you hit that Neil guy? I hit it high just behind the shoulder but it was angling away so okay Mm -hmm. entered entered just right off the back of the shoulder blade exited opposite side shoulder blade exited yeah yep what bullet i was shooting a 143 i was about 250 yards though so not a far shot i had a there was a lot of energy left interesting okay yep so tasty critter dropped where it stood like didn't take another step. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. And uh, hmm, that's cool. There were comments made about how that doesn't happen very often with Neil Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Everything I've heard about him is like, you know, buckle Super, up. I just describe it as dense. Yeah. You know, I shot odd ad. I shot odd ad with that looks... same rifle and that same load. Um, both of those animals were super dense. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't live on a, on a ton of water especially odd ad. I mean, they're getting their water from once in a while, depending on where they are, maybe a watering hole, but they're getting a lot of water from cactus. Um, and so as soon as you start cutting into those things, man, they are, there's a lot there. They're thick. Um, so that's my, uh, that's my bolt action hunting rifle. I killed one odd ad. I did it with a six, five creep more. Yeah. Yeah. Can be it's done. Like shot placement. 300 yard shot or something oh, like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I shot my odd at I think six forty five. Oh wow! At uh, a That's pretty a significant uphill shot in the mountains. Nice. West West Texas on the border. It's cool, a cool hunt. Cool. So we've got they are. We got, got a six five PRC. Got a bolt action six five PRC. Okay. Modular. Um, it is modular though, so I don't have to stick with that. <laughs> if I yeah. decide to want to change, I can change. Um, I've got a in my notes. I've got a rugged semi-auto 12 gauge okay now for me that's gonna get carried upland uh grew up in you know central minnesota so the dakotas were only a couple hour drive so carrying it in the field for pheasants um you know just the the way we hunt it's like early morning ducks and geese Mm -hmm. walk walk 
tree lines and field edges and, and CRP for pheasants on all day and then go back to go back and shoot some birds in the evening. So um, if I'm being real specific, you said Benelli M2, I'm probably my go-to like rugged shotgun is uh, a Beretta A400 Extreme. Okay. And it's uh, not the lightest gun, mm-hmm. but if I'm picking one, and that one has a, a – it's very shootable because of the, the stock geometry and the recoil, uh, kind of recoil absorbing mechanism in the stock. Um, I don't shoot a lot of three and a halves. I, in no. fact, probably one year out of all of my life of hunting waterfowl, uh, I shot three and a halves yeah. a little bit. Um, I don't like how the pattern turns out. Um, so, but yeah, shooting three inch, two and three quarter inch. Yeah. I can, if I want to, I can throw an extension tube on that gun and go shoot a little bit of competition, doves, snow, geese. Uh, snow geese, whatever, you know, whatever I need. Maybe not the extension for the doves. No, 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 no. For Maybe sure. if you're in Argentina, I don't know what yeah. they have going on there. Ryan, do you know? You can shoot extensions in Argentina. I would think. I don't Mi- think there's... I mis- mishmashed those words, but being able to yeah. throw an extension tube on it, uh, depending on what I'm... What Perhaps I mean. Ruben is in Nebraska and he's shooting Eurasian collar doves. Oh, then you can yeah, do, do what you want. Yep. We used to have a lot of those just in town. Yeah. Yeah. When I lived there. Um, I like it. Those are all... So there's, that's those three, all, right? Yeah. Really good choices. I've got a 1022 on my list. Mm. Um, squirrels, rabbits, plinking, varmints in the backyard. It's got a suppressor on it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I like that. And getting getting the kids into shooting. Yeah, you know, teaching teaching the kids on something that's quiet, low recoil. Um, yeah, and then I've just got a a nine millimeter polymer framed pistol. <sighs> we got you there, dude. Nine millimeter polymer Complete framed pistol. Oversight on my part. I'm an idiot. Well, <laughs> you're stuck with what I'm, you got. I'm yeah. trading so. the Creedmoor in. <laughs> you can't. It's on paper. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, it, it brand like <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> brand pick your flavor. I'm probably grabbing a Walther. I'm probably grabbing okay. a Walther PDP. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of good good polymer framed nine mil pistols. Um, but I'm I'm going full size. You know, seventeen or eighteen round mags, and uh, yeah, throwing a dot on it for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's my five. Let me check here. Yeah, that's my five. I have some runner-ups, but that can be for after. Ryan, edit this in. And for my fifth choice, uh, I'm going with a uh, Glock 19 or a Smith & Wesson 2.0. Wow, beautiful. There. Beautiful choice. That'll go in the file. For your five. Thank you. You know, and, and like... With a dot. I did say, of course. I did say, and w- with my bolt-action hunting rifle, I'm going with something modular. So if you're listening and you don't know maybe what where to look there, I'm probably going either like a Zermat action or a, a Seekins action where I can swap bolt faces, swap barrels. Okay. Okay. Should we keep going around the horn here? Or well, I, want, I, thought, I, need, yeah, some, we should I need some thoughts here. It, so number one, like, yes, those are all great choices. And uh, I just can't believe I had the pistol oversight. I thought you were going to throw it down. What do you mean throw down? Like you were going to have that on your list. I should have. That's why I added it after. I see. So that's how that's how much of a big game centric to lifestyle yeah. mindset that I have. I I went a completely different direction with this assignment, so don't feel bad. And we'll get to that. Well, you're not locked in. You can change nope, it to whatever nope, you want. No, nope. this is what I want. This is my Christmas list. Well, since you're okay. Okay. So uh what do they say, Ryan? You can wish in one hand. I can't remember. And shoot in the other. Yeah. Uh, Nick, what do you got? Well, oh, wait. We as didn't... far as the thoughts, let's go over let's the go thoughts. Let's go with the thoughts. Yeah. So I keep wanting to. It's funny to hear your your point of view and what, what you chose, and, and also Ruben's. And I think we all share a lot of similarities. And I think we're going to hear the same thing when we hear yours and mine. Um, and I feel like listeners here are going to also be like, wow, these are the things that I've chosen. If, if it's not all five, it's, you know, maybe 30, 40% of that, um, to what they're essentially thinking of when they want their guns. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to just pick all bolt bolt rifles and just hunt all the time? How am I going to protect my house? 
you can't protect your house with a bolt gun unless you, you ever seen tremors. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> I mean, we got to be ready for tremors. N- Nick, you, now you just look stupid. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know what? Can I leave? Is this <laughs> live? <laughs> this is significant. Okay, name another program in which Bert wasn't the savior of it. Sesame Street, Tremors. I think I believe those are the only two Berts that have ever been. Um, yeah. mm. Smokey and the Bandit. Are we talking about Bert Reynolds? No, character named Bert. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although Bert Reynolds, you know. Yeah. 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 Sure. It's all Berts, really. All yeah. Berts. Albert. Burt Reynolds is what I was thinking, Einstein. too. Albert Einstein. Einstein. I bet they call him Bert for short. Bertie. Yeah. <laughs> Not Al? N- no. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> no. <laughs> Not. No. 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 We know this to be fact. Anyways, we digress. Going back to yours, I think you chose two bolt-action rifles. Are we going to edit in the fifth one or no? Oh, no, we won't. It'll there's, just there's It's no going to roll the way it is. They're just yeah. going to... Throw it in, so you're going to have six. Anyways, I think you chose your Mountain Ascent. And what was your other bolt? It was a six. Well, just so just Creedmoor, like right? my, uh, the, the wisdom that I have is actually it's a Tika that we put a proof barrel on and then a, a manor stock and dressed it up. And then we got her shooting and off, off to the race. And then, uh, yeah, they, and you, you know, just a, just a moderately kind of like a similar form factor type Tika, 6.5 Creed, whatever. You know? I think subconsciously you think that... The Mountain Ascent can't do the things that the Creedmoor can do, and the Creedmoor can't do the things the Mountain Ascent. You needed to have both of those things to where you kind of maybe subconsciously forgot that pistol. Yeah. You needed to have those things. That's all right, though. Mark doesn't, like, go to the range a lot and shoot pistols a lot. Yeah, but everybody should have a pistol, though. So like, that do? needs to be in your repertoire. It does. And you need to know like how to use it. Like, it does. Yeah. And it means you will be penalized for not having one. Hmm. That's why I added it. All right, Nick. Uh, honorable, honorable mention. Um, I didn't bring notes. and um, you just know. I, it's not that I just know. I like to hear whatever the people think about all these things, too. And I'm happy that you guys do have notes. And it's, it, I sit here and, and smile about what you guys are choosing because a lot of the things that you guys have chosen already are things that are going to be on my list. And it's not that I'm cherry-picking off of what you have. It's just funny how common our mindsets are and and. I guess uh, the things that we like to do, want to do, and are able to do. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start. Um, long range is a something near and dear to me. I enjoy long range shooting quite a bit. I teach it. Um, and having a well-rounded long range um, rifle would be top, top of my list. And I want it to do things to where I can pack as much punch as I can out far within my ethical range. We can reach out and, and touch things miles away um, with with steel targets, and you're happy to kind of throw those lead down range. And if you miss, you miss. But when it comes down to hunting, I want to make sure that you know my fe- my freezer gets filled. Mm-hmm. If I can get closer, I'm going to get closer. And I also want to pack that punch and be able to take those further shots within my ethical realm, um, to be able to bring those in, right? Um, so I would have to say 6.5 PRC um, is one of those rounds that I'm able to one-pack punch at a distance that I'm comfortable shooting um, an animal at, and as well as take a little bit of that that recoil bite off it. I don't necessarily need to shoot the heavy recoiling stuff as much as I used to anymore. I want to be able to come back down on those targets and, and be able to, one, uh, visualize or, or see a, you know, impact or, or a miss and be able to correct those things and, and watch those things. That, that is a good cartridge for that. Cause it's got, it's got some gas, yeah. but it's not unmanageable that you do get to see what happened in the, in the scope. Right. Yeah. I don't like getting kicked off, kicked off my target. Um, when I'm in inside that scope, as soon as I get the target that I want to shoot inside that scope, I want to stay in there. And that has a lot to do with the, the fundamentals of it. It has a lot to do with your cartridge and what you have on the front of your gun, whether that's a muzzle brake or a suppressor. Um, so it's like, that is probably going to be the top choice for me. Getting something that I'm able to reach out and touch kind of far, um, but still be able to get in close and manage the recoil on that. So 6.5 PRC um, is that one for me. So any thoughts? Good? No, it makes a lot of sense. Like I, I, I see the thought process behind it. There's a very high likelihood that Mark will be 
researching 6.5 PRC. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fun round. By I'm, likelihood, I mean certainty. Well, I mean, I, my, my uh, <clears throat> draw to it was, like, I, I, I have all the reloading stuff. I've reloaded a lot of pistol, and I've reloaded some rifle. Um, uh, I used to take 6.5 Creed brass and neck it down to 6 Creed. And, um, you know, I used to have a lot more time to do that, too. And so now I'm kind of going off of, like, what I can easily get very accurate, consistent factory ammo. And that's one of them. Uh, and there's there's a lot of options, too. So it's part of my decision making process is just like how can wh- what can I get ammo for? Because um, yeah, there's probably five guns in my truck right now, and so if I'm paring down my whole uh, collection, <laughs> I've got to make sure I cover the bases. <laughs> <laughs> there's two. There's two other thoughts before I move on to my next gun. Why I chose six five PRC and more of a ballistic standpoint for memorization there's there's a lot of rounds out there and you can get a ballistic calculator for absolutely every bullet that's out there right now but when it comes to uh, like memorization for me it's easy to remember a more ballistically well for lack of a better term superior round to where your trajectory is very matchable to like remembering one number so if your distance is say 700 and you you go through the 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 equation of finding out what your gut quote-unquote gun number is you only have to remember one number for me that 65 prc is about 1.8 i believe 1.8 so every uh, if i if i have a target at let's say 500 i just subtract 1.8 from 5 um, which is 500 so you make that 500 a whole number 1.8 from 5 and you're at 3.2 Three point two is my holdover for five hundred, right? Did that math right? Math right? Yeah, sounds about right. Yep. Um, okay, so yeah. I just have to remember that one number, one point eight, to reach out comfortably up to a thousand yards and still be within that you know minute yep. or less than a minute, three quarter wow. minute. So yeah, I cool. remember one number. If I lose my dope card, if I lose my phone, if I lose something, if the battery dies, I still have that one number I can remember, and I'm happy. So. I think that's it. So we'll move on to the next. I like that. The next one. So I like that. That that's. I mean, that's that's a very extremely helpful tool. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an official name for that methodology? Um, I call. What do I call? I call it uh, speed dope. Mm-hmm. Sure. Speed dope. I don't know if that's coined by somebody. I think that's something I heard along the the years of shooting. But um, and speed that's dope. a that's a thing you f- you come to when you do look at the numbers. It's in a nutshell. Every hundred yards, you're appreciating about. 1.8 mils less drop than, than what that yardage distance is. So if it's 500 yards, you're observing 3.2 mils. Yeah, and that's because you did that example of math. We'll stick with that because I don't know what 1.8 less 7 is. So yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'll be 4.8. Yeah. So you you see that in pattern all the way out to whatever. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's clever. You just do that Just do that math, and you know it takes a little bit of writing it out and kind of doing all the math, and you're like... Eureka, right? Um, this is the number that I'm looking for. And not for, every so. cartridge is going to have no, that, right? No. So I mean, you'll see progressive drop off the, the more sloped your trajectory is. And uh, something to note, too, um, I haven't done it in the MOA side of it. Um, and the math like that may not necessarily work for sure. MOA. In the mills, it works handsomely. We're going to mill the world, though. You're yeah. also kind of doing that out to specific distances, right? Correct. So like if somebody's works. thinking like, oh, well, what about 1,400 yards? It's like oh, it, it probably the likelihood of it working is when you're staying inside of a, a relatively reasonable distance. Correct. And when you're when you're doing that math out and you're starting to see this trend of, oh, wow, that's 1.8. Oh, wow, that's 1.8. That's 1.7. That's 1.9. And then you start to see 2.4, 2.7. You've now broken away from that. Sure. Hey, mm-hmm. this number works. And you're like, okay, so in between 1,000 and 200, it works. But outside of that, I have to have a new number or I'm just not shooting that far or inside. It's point blank zero at that point. So yeah, we're or, not worried about it. You know, or you're using your GB or, yeah. your, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. like the other tools. But that, that's like a nice, that, that's a really cool fail safe. It's a very cool tool. Hmm. I like that. Just a little math. Hmm. Next gun. Tune into the next episode <laughs> where Mark changes Mark. his answers even more. <laughs> Mark builds a 6.5 PRC. It'll just be a, a whiteboard. I got to do math now. I want to see if any of my 
cartridges are intelligent. So uh, next gun, it's going to be a carbine style. And um, being that I enjoy long range shooting, I enjoy ballistics, and is going to be that six arc. It's going to be one your your house protection gun. It's an AR. Yeah, AR. Oh, okay. AR cool. um, gas gun, um, house protection uh, varmint, um, prairie dogs. Um, just reaching out and shooting, having some fun with that one. Uh, I know it's not a most prevalent round as as five five six or two two three or things like that, but um, I really enjoy the ballistics of six. Might even be able to deer hunt with it, right, Mark? You could, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Stay tuned for <laughs> fill the freezer the future vortex nation podcast, and that should be the podcast is just fill the freezer. All, All right, right. Anyways. six arc carbine gas gun um, is my choice for that one. Um, I enjoy that round very much, um, the ballistics of it, and being in its compact form factor is a, is a very good round. Um, I hadn't shot a lot of it in the, I mean, up until recent, the last two years, but I've kind of, you know, fallen in love with it a little bit, uh, and there's still more to learn on my side of, of that round, so look forward to doing that here in the future, but I would have to choose that one for my non-SHTF. Mm-hmm. Uh, third gun. Third gun is going to be a very weatherized shotgun, something that I'm back to that fill the freezer mentality. I don't necessarily need to go recreationally hunting just to bring back a couple, you know, breasts here and there. I'm looking to fill the freezer, right? So um, something where I can, an all-weather shotgun, 12-gauge um, Canadian goose um like you name it, just duck hunting, things like that, and turkey hunting. Um, I don't have to have multiple shotguns. It's just an all-weather, all-around um, good gauge as well as a just a, a good semi-auto shotgun. Um, so that's what would be my, my third choice for that one. Um, nothing specific. I do have a couple um, at home and one I do like, and it's something that it was my first all-weather shotgun, a Winchester Super X2. Um, I really like that shotgun. It hasn't failed me. It's easy to take part, easy to clean. And then I just enjoy it. It has all the things that I want and, and nothing I don't. So that's that's my choice for my third third gun, right? Was that my third? We got yep. the PRC. The PRC, 6-arc, 12-gauge, six 12 12 and then we get to the 1022, right? That's three in a row, 1022, something to... Zap some squirrels, some some rabbits, chipmunks, you name it. Pest control. Pest control, having fun, just not dumping tons of money on the mm-hmm. range and um, just having fun shooting it. Uh, I have a little biathlon action that I like, and oh. it's, it's a little fun, just one finger, poop, poop. Um, like a PWS? Yeah, PWS yeah. Summit. Yeah. yeah, It's a great it's a great little gun, carbon fiber barrel. That is a cool gun. I enjoy it. I got a suppressor coming for that one, too, so I'm really excited to get that in here and uh, start shooting it. But, uh, yeah, 1022 suppressed, and then my final will just be in a classic uh, standard size 9mm. Yep. Yep. So as well-rounded, all disciplines from pistol to to bolt uh, other than machine guns, but we don't need all that stuff, essentially. non. SHTF, non. Right. We don't need a machine gun for that. This is just kind of your daily drivers. Yeah, daily drivers. Your yeah. Kia Sonatas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really good. Should I change? You can change your mind. I think I need to make my shotgun a synthetic. Okay. <laughs> the hell was the concession? <laughs> like I'm thinking, that, I'm thinking yeah. he's like, you know what? I'm the hell was six five Creedmoor? <laughs> I'm going with six five PRC. I need to make my shotgun a synthetic. Hey, hell yeah, man! That's I'm going me. back. I don't want to. I just think it's the right call. It's his like right. Yeah, it's his yeah. right. <laughs> it's his right to yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, Nick, I think that it. Uh, so here's that what, fits Nick too. That I'm, fits I'm just Nick, simple, and I love because I respect Nick. And I love that we corroborated a couple things there. That like makes me feel good about yeah. my choices. Yeah. And root, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Good job, guys. Now good on job. to Ryan. I did the assignment different. That's good though. I like yeah. That I have all the things that we talked about on this list. I actually I don't have a gas gun chambered in six arc. Um, I have the components for a gas gun sans one barrel. 
I believe that it'll probably be on my list of future acquisitions um, because I have I have fallen in love with that little cartridge, mm-hmm. and it's pretty special. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. <laughs> I, I have a, a polymer 19. Why are we gathered or, here? I have a, a polymer 9 millimeter, um, which I like. I have a multitude of synthetic shotguns, which I like. I have a multitude of 1022s also, which I like. Um, so I'm going to say that I get to keep all of them because there are no rules. Everything that I currently own, okay. I get to keep. Okay. What I don't currently own that need to, my five non-shoot, um, hunt, trap, fish guns, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the one that got away, the 1903 Manlicker our carbine, chambered in 6.5 by 54 Manlicker. Um, yeah. So Minnesota Weapons Collectors Association show, this is years ago. Um, I, I went to that show to buy that gun, ho- hoping it would be there. I had no idea whether it would be there or not. And this is the pipe dream of, of an 18-year-old version of me. Like, certainly somebody is going to have this extremely obscure rifle that was produced in limited quantities in a different country across the Atlantic um, in a very odd cartridge. And lo and behold, there was one on uh, a rack. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you really want to do the thing. Like, everybody wants to be in a rock band, but then, like, the crowd is cheering, and you got to go up to the mic and sing in front of 52,000 people, and you get stage fright, and you walk away. I walked up to the gun. The gentleman who was sitting behind his table, he had all fine guns. And I, I couldn't even speak, and I said, can I handle that? And he asked me if I knew what it was. And so I told him, he goes, you know what it is. You can handle it. I picked it up. I like, I like that he's like, had to put a qualifier. In oh there. yeah. And you know, if, if you go to a few gun shows or a few gun shops and you run into um, somebody that purveys in fine arms, a lot of times at a lot of gun shows, you know, they oftentimes give out popcorn and <laughs> usually you don't want oily, salty fingers on top of fine rust bluing or color case hardening. Um, and it was it was kind of like a, yeah, you're cleared. Go ahead. And uh, I touched a gun. This is a singu- singular example of one that I've ever touched in my hands. And I put it back on the rack and said, I have to think about it. And those words will probably never leave my mouth again um, when it comes to a firearm that I want. Because that was that. At, by saying those things, uh, that allowed somebody else to come in and buy it. And when I when I came back to go buy it, it was gone. So you you later that day, day. you said, you know what, I will take it. Probably, f- I don't know, like between a half hour and an hour and a half later, I was like, oh no, you're an idiot. Go buy that gun. Gone. But oh. I moped around for the next couple of days working that show because I let that gun slip away. The one that got away. Yep. Don't miss an opportunity. No. Can't. No. You still seem down. I'm bummed, man. I was high bidder on one for a little while this summer. I was I was keen on on picking that up. Um, actually, podcast listener turned me on to that one. And uh, the gentleman who won it just simply had a deeper pocketbook. And, and I'm certain it's gone to a good home. He knows what it is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was... Uh, the crummy part about that one is the gentleman that that gun was being sold on consignment. This most recent one that I was bidding on, and the seller had let the gentleman know my enthusiasm um, for that particular rifle, and actually the entire series of of what I call 1900s uh, manlickers, of which there's a few. Um, and he says it's a bummer that he didn't know ahead of time because he would have. I think the guy was in like Ohio or Indiana. He would have loved to show me his collection, and would have sold me the gun. Um, off consignment. I would have made the trip to go down there and look at that. Oh, yeah. And um, that that one uh, it one's my slippery trout, Mark. You it's, know what? Uh, there's, there's, yeah. there's value in still having it out there. It, there is. There's a, there's a part of me yeah, that... How much would Ryan change when he gets it? So I worry about that a lot because over the years, I've I've had. Uh, uh, what if it didn't fill the hole that you think it's going to? It probably. I, I mean, so it's a material possession, so it probably won't. But at this point, it's been. A, a, I'm not going to call it an obsession, but a thing that I've been wanting for so long, 
And and there's several of them out there. Like I'm I'm aware of the majority of them that are for sale on on the major auction sites as well as some um, you know bespoke and high end um, retailers like you know retail sites and things like this. But not all of them are right. Like that one's barrel doesn't match the receiver. That one has an odd hole drilled in it for an obscure mount that that I would have to pay arguably the price of the rifle to have a new one fashioned or it's been molested in some manner that it's not it doesn't sit well with me and so I'm okay with biding my time waiting for the quote right one to come by um, and and the one that I was going to purchase or was bidding on uh, that one was clean it was, it was right. good yeah it was right um, but that that one's that one's there so you get this rifle yeah let's say what do you want to do with it? Like, what foot for? Why do you want it? Um, so that rifle in particular was, uh, I think, in my mind, made famous by an ivory hunter um, named WMD Bell, who did a lot of research at the turn of the century on where to shoot elephants and how to kill them effectively. And he was one of the most um, prolific and successful ivory hunters of the time. And he was kind of made famous by this, that he wasn't walking around with a black powder express or nitro express cartridge for doing this. He was using this diminutive, it's, it's, it's less ferocity than, than like a six, five Creedmoor from a, Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, correct. Um, 156 or 160 grain long round nose six, five projectile. And he mastered the brain shot, studied elephant anatomy to the T and to the nth degree um, <clears throat> came up with shot angles. There's fantastic diagrams that he wrote. He was eventually smashed by an elephant um, when one of those shots landed errant. And then he he doubled down and he said, I, I need more gun. And he switched to a 7x57. He wasn't smashed all the way then? Not completely jellied. No. Oh, okay. No. Um, still still operational, but he, he up, up cartridged, up calibered to a, a 7 Mauser, 7x57. And then that became what he ran he started with a 303 brit hmm. of all things um so when i read um when i read of of wmd bell's exploits and adventures i became enamored with this it's a very interesting looking gun i mean they're, they're absolutely beautiful um you know very short carbine length it's like a 19 and a half inch barrel oh very svelte little rifle um you know butter knife bolt handle as made famous by those I'm full length this thing up. full length man liquor stock uh absolutely um gorgeous little gun uh very very interesting rotary magazine um, and a neat cartridge but that that is the one that slipped through my fingers if you get it yeah and i'm not saying like you're gonna book an elephant hunt I don't know that any country that um, allows elephant hunting allows that cartridge for elephant hunting. I will, I will hmm. be more than happy shooting white-tailed does in Wisconsin during the holiday season uh, with it, as well as chasing pronghorn, which is like my caliber testing grounds. It's pronghorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Worked again. Yep, it, it generally <laughs> Got does. Another. Uh, so that one, that's that's one. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Number two is. Less of a specific rifle, like as in model, although there is one that is outstanding, but more of a specific um, style of rifle. It is a bolt action. The inspiration for this comes from a well-loved test rifle that we have here, a uh, Kimber Talkeetna in 375 Holland and Holland. Um, I don't have a 375 bolt gun. I don't know that I need a 375 bolt gun. But I know that I want a 375 bolt yeah. gun. Mm -hmm. That particular rifle is exceptional. Um, it's extremely utilitarian. It it lacks every single redeeming quality of a quote safari rifle. It does not have a high end English walnut stock. It does not have a red Packmeyer decelerator uh, pad. It is not a high luster blue finish with um, leaf sights. It is a stainless synthetic workhorse. Happens to be chambered in 375 H&H. &H, happens to shoot 300 grain Acubons, sub MOA, and is an absolute delight to shoot. Um, I had a customer, this is back in at Old Vortex, who had brought in a Blazer R8 three-barrel set, 223, I believe 308, and 375 H&H. &H, and he had 
me outfit the whole rig, I think with a a six and a half to 20, a two and a half to 10, and then a one to six. And he brought the one to six back and he says, it doesn't hold zero. And I said, okay, well, you know, we, we tested it and it looked fine. He wasn't very confident. We replaced it. Um, he brought it back again. He's like, no, this thing does not hold zero on this gun. At that point, you're like, mm, this is not the culprit. <clears throat> yeah. So, oh, well, actually, I think well, you were probably there on the first one, too. But. There was skepticism. And so I went and I talked to the niece. I said, do we have, like, any African game rifles? And he's like, well, yeah, we've got this Talkeetna. It's cool. And I uh, took it out, and it just hammered. And I got so bored, or not bored, so excited with it that I then took it over to the silhouette range, chicken proofed it, and you were going on a moose hunt. And I remember we were talking about cartridges to take on that. And we looked at the full gambit from oh, yeah. your wisdom to that H and H at the top end and and doing the math on it, like the H and H hung right in there with the right bullet. And specifically that three hundred grain Acubond. Ultimately you ended up with a uh three hundred Ultra Mag. Mm-hmm. that um, I think a buddy of yours had mm-hmm. with it, which was the perfect choice considering what you ran into that hunt. But um, that gun, I would be very tickled pink with. Um, I like, if I'm not, like a brown bear guide or something like that. Yeah. But I think, I think, like, if I was going to have, like, my guide gun, my client backup gun, because of the weight of that rifle, and I don't know if they all shoot as good as that one, but that one shoots that exceptionally one shoots, well. Man. And uh, man, like you said, stainless synthetic. It's lightweight. Yep. Three seventy-five and H H and H, very capable. I'd be hard pressed not to make that my selection for that application. Yeah, I think with a PST two one to six, which is kind of a chunky boy. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say that gun just over nine pounds. As configured, it's not a short barrel either. No, it's no, like it's like a, a twenty-four. Full, yeah, full-size gun. Um, just a rip to shoot too. It was more pleasurable to shoot than any of my thirty-caliber magnums. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I shot a lot of three seventy-five that day, and it was just a it was a trip. The recoil it's more impulse of, a of the three seventy-five yeah. is just there's something very yeah yeah comfortable with it. Yeah. Um. So that one, a three seventy-five bolt gun. That is a very tall contender. Um, the third is also not necessarily a specific gun, but a specific configuration. And um, I'll start with a specific version. Um, the very famous firearms distributor Lipsy's uh, contracted Ruger some years ago and made a specialized Lipsy's Blackhawk from Ruger. Um, and it's a it's called a convertible model, so 45 ACP and 45 long Colt comes with both cylinders. This specific variant had a three and three quarter inch barrel, um, what I call their their competition hammer, which is a slightly lower hammer, um, so it doesn't it's not so proud up like flush with the top strap. It's actually lower. Okay. And then came with a Bisley grip, and it's a very attractive gun. Um, in in that like it just looks right. There's not so much barrel that it looks like an old bunt line. Um, it, it's like a very intelligent configuration for a single-action gun. It's a Ruger Blackhawk, so they're very strong. Um, the machining was very well done on it. The convertible cylinder is a novelty, but something I find interesting no less. So I can shoot ACPs out of one cylinder. I can shoot long Colts out of the other. Um, it's a it's a packable gun. It's a carryable gun. Um, and everybody wanted to be a cowboy when they were younger. And that would be it. I would also be over the moon about the Freedom Arms um, contemporary to that. Freedom Arms um, makes probably the best revolvers ever made. Uh, they are as as finely machined pieces of equipment as, like when you when you handle one. I'm trying to think of another analog that even fits, but it's like opening up a, an engine compartment on a, on a car that's completely and totally custom by some sort of master mechanic that also is a master welder and an engineer and a metallurgist. It is like everything is perfect on them. And uh, a good friend of mine who I hunt with has a number of Freedom guns, and they are flawless. They're, they're also scaled down. So like despite it being 
a 45 long Colt or a 45 ACP, which is a large cartridge. It fits in the hand like you would expect a 38 revolver hmm. would typically. So it, it's like it's a f- maybe a half frame or a full frame smaller than what generally speaking everybody else is stuffing a, a 44 or 45 into. Um, and just beautiful pistols. So I've been looking for that Ruger. I f- actually have found one in Wisconsin. Um, I have, I'm not going to buy it. Now's not the time. It's in Thorpe right now. Okay. And it's sitting on a for sale, uh, a for sale site. It's pretty steep, but they all are. They were made in super limited quantities and they're, they're highly sought after. Um, I may go look at it. I may change my mind, but now's not the right. You don't think that's like, oh, just take the puppy home for a day. (sighs) I don't know. You better buy it before this podcast comes out because someone's going to jump on no, that No, now's not the time. Now's not the time. Are you sure? Because I don't want another... No, this is not to the same degree that the, the man liquor is. Okay. This isn't even This isn't even remotely remotely there. Um, okay. Yeah. Because I don't think you can take two of those. No, no. Um, I, could go, I could go buy this one tomorrow if I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. There would be... There's a whole. Th- You've worked with me for long. You know how it is for me to select a firearm. It's process. Jim calls it my crippling indecision. <laughs> um, there's a process. Paralysis that, by analysis. Yeah. yeah. The 1903 would take a great deal of scrutiny, or it would have to have the provenance behind it that the individual selling it. If I knew who that individual was and I knew what they were into, like I'd buy that gun. Mm-hmm. Pretty damn quick, right? Um. The that that's it on the revolver. Like it's it's just that's it. I have no use for a forty five ACP and forty five long cold convertible <laughs> revolver, other than I'd like to shoot two hundred and fifty grain cast bullets at you know some minuscule velocity over a charge of tight group and go ding on steel plates. Would owning that pistol somehow personally justify? Playing dress up for you, it'd help for sure. Okay. Yeah, so cowboy dress. Yeah, yeah, cowboy. Yeah, it helped for sure. Um, I bought a pair. Would you join like SAS? No. Okay. No. No. Uh, um. No. SAS. Single action shooting sports. Oh, okay. No, that's not for me. I'm okay. not that quick. That's a gear intensive shooting. I mean, there's there's a lot of work to be done. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got a couple thousand dollars in leather just to get into yeah. that, too. <laughs> and then the bandana. <laughs> and the leather vest. Guy. There's a lot of activity. And, you know, leather I'm guy. I'm telling you, I, I got no business wearing a cowboy hat. Start smelting None lead whatsoever. in his basement. Just the whole thing. In the right setting, though, you'd look great. I'm I booked. don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think if I wore a Western hat or a cowboy hat, I think, I don't know, I couldn't do it. Subconsciously, maybe you can't do it, but. Externally, two hundred and fifty likes real and good. get yeah. Ryan a cowboy hat. That could happen. I think you'd look better than you think. Next spaghetti shootout. It's like me when I'm not throwing shit because I think it's like it's not that I got no business I see doing where you're, I I would feel like so I think it's cool that people do that. I would feel like an imposter. It's, that's my thing. So wh- okay, aesthetic aside, maybe I look fine. Maybe I look like Garth Brooks or I Toby you, Keith. I bet you would look. I mean. <laughs> The point is, it's like if I showed up here in cowboy boots, I don't have cows. I don't have a horse. Right. I don't ranch. Not happening. Um, that is, that. that's, you know how I am about footwear. I got a thing. Um, and that's all I got to say about that. The fourth gun uh, is a fine double rifle. Um, I'd probably pick German because they're overbuilt and strong. So I'm looking at you, Merkel. I would certainly be okay with a Holland and Holland. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be great. A little bit out of the budget, but a, a nice double rifle in a nice nitro cartridge would be grand. Okay. Um, Which nitro are you going with? You know, four fifty, four seventy. Um, I don't. I don't think I can handle a five or a five seventy seven or a six. No, um, a four seventies. Mildly practical. Mm-hmm. Um, a 450 is cool. I think you, you know you don't hear a lot about 450 any. Um, 450 400 uh, would be neat too. That's actually on the on a very tolerable scale. 450 400. That's a that's a pretty. I have never fired a double rifle. 
If I get one, you can. If you would let me, I would yeah. love to do that. I I, <laughs> I look for them. Um, I would say routinely. Usually those things are going to be like, that's a purchase. That's an expensive gun. Um, you have to come to terms with like... Uh, if, you f- if I get a double rifle... Yep. You can rest assured I've had some sort of financial windfall. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And that's I'm not mostly gonna tell people I won the lottery. <laughs> there will be sides. But there will be sides. There will be sides. Um it... You want to come to my double rifle party? Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's a pretty significant financial endeavor. However, people buy like I don't own a four wheeler or side by side. Every so often, I think to myself, like, oh, the utility of that vehicle would be exceptional. And then I look up how much they cost, oh, and I'm like, man. I could have three double rifles. Yeah, that's true. And I guarantee I'd enjoy them, and they'd appreciate in value versus one of them rascals. People buy those around here, just drive around town. The rascal isn't, uh, that's not a four wheeler. No, the. Uh, oh, yeah. The double barrels. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, so, anyway, a nice double. I think that would be okay. And the fifth is actually a series of five guns. But <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Not go. only is he keeping all of his I, guns hey, that he already look, has. It's a series of five, and, and I'm, I'm on my journey now to procure them. And that is the Merkel uh, doubles, their, their game guns. So, uh, uh, Shotguns. Yeah. So a 360, which is a 410, a 280, which is a 28, a 47 or a 147 or a 247. In 20, uh, either a, a 47, 147, 247, and 16, or a 1620, which is a 16 gauge bore on a 20 gauge oh. frame. Or, oh, that um, sounds neat. Yeah, it, very, very cool guns. Um, or not, or, and then a 47, 147, 247, 12 gauge. They have to all be straight grips, double triggers. I'd prefer them choked. Um, like cylinder IC, skeet IC, or IC mod at most. And then I will use them to hunt. That is the one practical installment I'm bringing into this. I will shoot things to eat later. Would it's you, uh, really, yeah, think about it. You would probably, I think even just having those, you would be obligated to upland hunt a lot more. Like you yeah, would even I think have he upla- to substitute. He, he upland hunts a lot. I, I mean, not as much as I'd like to. I'm saying, like, instead of doing a big game trip out west, you're doing. Like a trip for whatever. I ran into a fella. Huns and Chucker or whatever. Yeah. You know. I ran into a fella who was carrying, this was last year, um, I was in uh, northern Wisconsin. And at a prime grouse spot that Bill and I have had a lot of success on. And I was mile, I don't know, like 10 on the day. Mm-hmm. And I come up over this hill, and here's a gentleman, actually two gentlemen and two um, what I call fancy boy gun dogs. Uh, they had the GPS collars on them and everything. Um, and these dogs, I can tell, are, are seasoned dogs. They're, they're missing all the fur from their chest, from from their, uh, you know, the fronts of their legs, and nose to the ground working. And I noticed that there was a, a very nice SUV pulling a six-place dog trailer on the trail miles away. And I thought, I bet that's that guy. And I get up here, and um, his buddy has a high-end Beretta. He has like a $20,000 British shotgun over his shoulder. Oh, wow. And we got talking about grouse hunting. And he had a hat. Like, the the hat really, like, I haven't gotten to that level yet where I could buy one of those hats and feel good. It's like a, a felt hat, you know. And um, we got talking about grouse. I told him I shot a spruce grouse. He said, you're going to love that thing. And because there's a bunch of, um, I shot the spruce grouse in Minnesota. Um a bunch of, uh, you know, stigma around spruce grouse tasting like gin. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, it didn't. He said, cook it hot and fast like a duck. Okay. And I did, and it was superb. And I will try to aspire to be like that gentleman. I like it. Yep. So scratch the cowboy hat. Yeah. No. Give me one of them. What would you felt- call Is it a stormy? It's not a stormy crumb. Or what, no, what I think you, call it? Um, you see like a oh, lot it's of. It's like Tommy Shelby. No, 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 not like a not like a peaky blinder. It's like um, a wool crusher hat? I think the crusher is the correct term. It's got a brim. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Kind of, but like think of uh, Bavarian huntsman. You know, you see him he dons this it's got a 
pretty light brim on it. Mm-hmm. It's got a band around there. Oftentimes, they'll adorn it with a feather of some kind. But small feather, not like big long, not like yeah. a not like a pheasant feather. It's like October like feather. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that. I love yeah. it, Brian. I'm I gonna, think yeah. that fits you more. Yeah. I, I, you could uh, you could certainly put so. I when I started hunting, yeah, big game. It was blacktails and rosebud elk, and I wore a wool crusher because it kept the kept the rain off your neck. Yep, I didn't have rain gear, but that and uh, it had a band, and I put a feather in it. Yeah. From a grouse that I shot. Yep. I'm okay with I'm all that. I'm going to look this up. I don't I'm, think I'm there's enough people it. hunting with felt hats anymore. It's a very traditional piece of garb, yeah. you know, especially in the old country. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know how it is here. Where you got to wear a particular, everything has to match. It's basically what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. And I think that there's room for, for that kind of adornment. If I'm running a nice German built shotgun, it, Stands to reason that I have a nice Bavarian style hunting hat. Yeah, I'm gonna look for this hat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one. Yeah, you should. They're super practical. Doesn't matter what I'm hunting. I'm wearing it. Yeah. So my fifth okay. gun's five guns. Really, it's one style of guns. <laughs> we are we're outgunned, gentlemen. We have five. Ryan has probably five hundred. You have seven. No, well, I guess you. Well, I didn't Six. add. I just kind of massaged my <laughs> list. Slipped one. Re- under the were- it's a pistol. They're small. Right. <laughs> Doesn't oh, even you count. see it? It's under yeah. my shirt. <laughs> there were no rules. You said that up Sur- front. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. Ryan's got nine, right? About that, yeah. Okay. His first four and his last one was five. Yeah. Okay, yeah. About yeah. nine. You have seven. Five to seven. Six with a modification. Yeah. Yeah. Six asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> but I was willing, I was willing to remove the six five creed and opt in for the pistol. Okay, fair. Mm-hmm. I'll take I'll accept that. Because then I still have a gun that I could point at anything. You could have you could have kind of done the cop out answer and been like, Yeah, I need a good big game rifle. But you didn't. You got specific, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I want something that I mean, hell, I I've shot pronghorn with that cartridge. I've yep. shot mule elk deers. with that cartridge, mule deer, bears, yep. everything. If everything I could, that I've shot. If really. I could make an addition, I would I would get um, a nice side by side shotgun. Mm-hmm. Probably twenty gauge. Mm-hmm. Probably I mean, a parallel. And that's why mm-hmm. I, that's why I went with that the Woodstock twelve gauge to kind of be that too. But yeah, then but like I was worried about like what if you're hunting sea ducks or I'll Come tell on. you what. Yeah, nobody's ah. ever killed a sea duck with a wood stock. Yeah, I'm just saying Jeez. I would feel bad bringing th- that gun into such. I mean, those marine environments are just brutal. Man. Yeah, my walnut swear. Parallel is a really good call. Yeah, I I want to I want a Beretta. They do not make many side. of those. They don't make many of them, and they are elusive when they get uh, out to dealers. I, I if inc- they make it that far. I inquired, and in, uh, the number I was told on the production on an annual was so far below the demand on an annual yeah, that it was like, oh, all right. So, yeah, I held one of those at, I think it was probably like shot 20, I don't know, long ago. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Yeah. 486 Parallelo. Interesting. Super. A little round body. Oh. <laughs> Add it to the list. You already got nine. Nick's got to yeah. Nick's got to add to the list too. Pretty soon here, right? How you mean? You're looking at double guns. Oh, I am. I yeah. am. Two bores. Like two bores. I really like the Damascus barrels. Those old school sure. 1900s, yes. early I guess turn of the century. Yeah. I mean, you got to be pretty careful with those, right? In what aspect? Well, like I remember when quality? I took Hunter Ed, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Yeah, if you got a Damascus barrel, don't shoot a modern shell through it because it's." Well, not, there's considerations for sure. Yeah. Um, there's but. shell manufacturers that make shells for those guns too. Yeah, they're just so RST. Pretty. Yep. RST is a, one of the real popular ones. Yep. Those there's a lot of still in Europe. There's a lot of those guns still. Okay. In play. There's a lot of those guns in northern Minnesota that are still in play. There you go. What what what's your you just like the way they look? I love the way that Damascus barrel looks. It's cool. It's just hand 
forged, I guess, for lack of a better term. They just look so pretty. Filed, fitted. Soldered. What do you want to do with it? Upland game. Grouse, woodcock, pheasant, you name it. I think Purdy just, maybe two years ago, re-released it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think it was Purdy. Hmm. I remember seeing it. I, it. It. If it's not Purdy, it's up there with the the price of what Purdy's typically go for. Because mm-hmm. I remember it like, wow. And mm-hmm. then I saw the price. I was like, yeah. yeah. Ruben showed me a uh, CZ double. Sure. Over the weekend, that looked pretty good. It Very. wasn't Damascus no. barrel or anything. It wasn't old. It was modern. But that thing looked pretty good. I can't remember what the price tag on that was, but very reasonable mm-hmm. guns, very strong guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was used. That was a twenty gauge. I think it was six fifty. Yeah, was yeah, a good correct. Shape. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just to kind of get you into that same type, that type of hunting. Yeah, you know, action open, walking around, watching the dogs. Yeah, traditional trad, trad, trad following yeah. the Upland. methods, trad hunting. Upland. Yeah, shout out to our friends up there. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm creeping through the woods with my ten twenty two. Okay. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> if, if you didn't know this about Mark and I, we became friends when he we were talking about grouse. He's like, "Wait, they can fly?" <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's when I knew. Uh, you find another fellow that's willing to grease one off the trail and unabashedly so. That's a good. That's a good guy. <laughs> that's kind of tr- that's trust tree stuff man, right there. That's dinner. Uh, Rube, I've got some uh, one last thing, uh, un- completely unrelated. I've got my paper notes as per usual. I noticed your notepad. You have electronic notes. Yeah. What is this thing? What is this strange world? Mm, this is a remarkable. Um, I usually mostly use it for um, trade shows, industry events, uh, and when we're doing trainings. Um, take notes, and then as soon as I get back to Wi-Fi, it uploads those notes to my computer and my cell phone. Wow. It's pretty cool. You yeah. can call her on it. It's remarkable. You can dr- like, draw. It's remarkable, yeah. Yeah. Any. Yeah, you can download PDFs on it too. So, like having price list in here. Oh, so I can have my price list at shows and stuff. And we get customers that come in uh, to talk about. I really like this. I had an issue with this, and so I take down little like write down your email, write down your phone number. Uh, when I get back to the office, I start emailing customer care. And uh, if somebody is looking for an order, I email whoever placed the order for them and. It's just my uh, yeah, it's super handy. Then you're not getting back. Where was that? Where's that piece of paper? Yeah, yeah. And somehow um, it's faster than texting yourself or emailing yourself, just to be able to <laughs> pen it in there. And it takes your handwriting and turns it into readable text. Well, that's cool. Well, I saw it when we got in here, and I was going to ask about it, so I did. Yeah. So go, now everybody go gets speak to with know. your uh, local IT representative. <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys. Well, this was fun. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate, uh, and enjoyed everybody's take on this thing. Uh, again, made me feel good to see some consistency there. And, uh, Ryan, of course, you know, always interesting to hear about the stuff that you're into. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment. Yeah. Thanks, bud. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to everybody for listening. What are your five guns? Let us know. We want to know. Uh, is it the same, similar, completely different? Uh, weird like this guy? No. Um, and uh, let us know in the comments below. You know I don't mean that. I, I love you very much. But it's real. It, I know what I am. <laughs> you're, uh, <laughs> you're, uh, I'm trying to think of like a very positive word. Unique. No, better than that. No, it's it's true story, Mark, because this weekend, I w- all I did was gun work. You're I'm, one of one, and I'm so grateful to have you in my life. I'm. I'm telling from you, a shooting take, here's my piece of advice. Everybody else at the table here gave practical recommendations for sensible, reasonable, useful things. I came to the table with opulence. Uh, He's a hopeless romantic in terms of guns. Yes, that's a great way to put it. I was goofing around all weekend, betting stocks, adjusting triggers, loading weird ammo. If you're passionate about it, that's great. Ruben made a very important thing. He's like, I don't have the time. And that's real. Like, I agree with that. I uh, identify with that. There's something to be said for having a handful of guns that just work. And you don't have to goof around with stuff. There's comfort in that. A ton of confidence in it. I almost regret doing this podcast now. 
Why? Because if my <laughs> wife listens, she's. G- oh, you only need five guns, uh, huh? Yeah. Oh no, that's not what we're saying. Let's just. <laughs> it's be five clear. more than. This is a strange. This is a strange, <laughs> horrible fantasy world where you only get five. <laughs> Get some practical stuff that you don't. You don't mean that. Yeah. You know, no, I don't. But you know, I tell you all the That's time. That's a like, do if as I, I just say. Get, if I just get these three done, don't need to build no more. Yeah. I just need one, I just need one more. Just one more. Uh, awesome. Okay. Well, once again, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Like I said, let us know in the comments below. What are your five guns? Mm. No strings attached. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. See ya. See ya. Bye. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.